Welcome to the Appetite for Discussion show with your host, Brandon Crouch. Tonight's show is sponsored by a hunk of junk hauling. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and listening for tonight with tonight's guest, Adam Perry. Adam Perry of the Peculiars. So, um, as always, if you can name the intro song plus uh, the the artist, you win tonight a 25 gift certificate to Delaney's Sports Bar. Not 25 gift certificates, but 25 <laughs> a $25 <laughs> gift certificate. And I'll, I'll say this. My band, The Peculiars, that's the only cover song that we do is that song that you just played. So, there's a... There is a sneak peek. So how cool There's is that? You didn't even know that, did you? Like, that was purely coincidental. You know, every time I DJ at um, Delaney, you, you ask for that song. I do. <laughs> and, we, and, we co- and we cover that song. So that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. Thanks for being on, man. And actually, actually was going to uh, be a question that I had was uh, later on in the show. when we uh, I've got a couple questions in my, in my script here that I'm running through. Not really. I don't have a script. <laughs> <laughs> um. How old were you when you started playing music? Uh, I was 14. I I had always known, like, from as far as back as I can remember. I remember when I was in preschool, I would, uh, I'd come home from preschool every day and, and I would make the family gather around and I'd stand up on, like, a stool or something and sing, like, the song that we learned that day. Like, I always knew I wanted, I didn't know if I was any good and I wasn't back then, trust me. But uh, my first music, real musical endeavor happened when I was about 14 years old. So, so, I've been doing it ever since. Uh, did you uh, did you play any instruments, or you just liked singing at that age? Well, I knew I wanted to sing, but uh, uh, I called my dad. My dad lived in New York at the time. We didn't see each other very much, uh, but uh, he was a musician. And I told him, I said, "Dad, I want, I'm starting a band. Uh, I don't, I don't, I know I want to sing. I'd like to play an instrument of some kind. I don't know really what I want to do, but so." About two weeks later, I get a bass guitar in the mail from my father, and uh, I I picked it up the first time I ever picked up an instrument. And I would I would play the radio, and whatever song came on, and and I don't know, man, I could just I could just play. I could hear something, and I could I just could play. Uh, You're one of those dudes. I just picked it up, and I just you know could hear it, and I just it just started trickling through my fingers. I'm not claiming to be great at it, but <laughs> I could I could play along, and, yeah. and I could. You know, I think some people have a real ear for for music and, and rhythm and things like that. I don't really necess- I don't necessarily think it's about playing the instrument itself. I just think if you if you have a natural ear for rhythm and and sound, I think I think certain things can come naturally to you. Just just like if, if you know if some people that can cook really well, some right. people you know can do math really well. I think I, I mean when it came to that, I could always just play. I'm knocking on 40s door, and um, me too. I'm still waiting to find what flows with me rhythmically <laughs> like what what is it so um but i'm but i'm not gonna give up i'm gonna keep searching keep searching i mean you're a successful guy man you're doing you're doing good things right yeah i think so yeah <laughs> <laughs> it all uh, yeah, i don't know but um so you started your first band at 14 or i did i was 14 years old first band what was the name of your band it was called the buzz uh one z cleverly product placement some <laughs> Talking about that band now, man, it's crazy. But uh, I, it, some of the guys that were in that band, I'm still I'm still very good friends with to this day. So it's, um, but I think I'm the only one out of it that's still actively playing music. That's still so, actively playing, right? Um, so you have um, well, before I get to that. So you started at 14, and then you played with the Buzz for a short period, and then you continued playing with other bands. Yeah, uh, the Buzz. We were together for. About three years, I guess, close to it. Um, that broke off, and then I started another band called Nothing Special with some of the guys from the from from the Buzz. Um, we made two from that band came two albums. Um, if anyone has the, <laughs> if anyone has those, that's something to hear for sure. But Bring them by the ladies and autograph. Granted, them. I'm proud of what we did. I mean, for, yeah. for the time and and for, for what it was, you know, back then it was. I'm really proud of it. I still I still have those albums, but um, how old were you guys when you made your first album? I was 21 when we recorded the first one. I think so. When you're 20 or 21, 
where does where does a young kid like that? I mean, obviously you guys don't have a ton of money, right? And it right. costs to make an album, right? So where did you go find a studio to record and produce? We one of the guys knew a guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, this guy had a studio out in Taylorsville or Hidden Night area, somewhere like that. Um, and uh, we got connected with the guy, and we. They liked us a lot, mm-hmm. so we went in and we spent about four days at their house, about right at the studio, and uh, and uh, we recorded the first album. And up to that point, they told us that was that was by far the best recording job they had ever done, and um, we loved it. I mean, hearing yourself on an album for the first time that was, um, you know, we were super giddy, you know, at the time when it came out, but. Uh, yeah, and so we built a good relationship with those guys. So we recorded the second album with with those same guys as well. So um, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a, it was a great learning experience for us to do it. Uh, we learned what we were able to tolerate and what we weren't f- with each other as a group. Because um, there was <laughs> there were some arguments and stuff, but um, I, I I'll never trade that experience for anything, man. It was a great time. And uh, what style of music were you guys playing? We were then? we were very much pop punk influenced. Blink One Eighty Two was sort of come hitting out. Green Day was a, a big a big thing at that time. Yeah. Um, and there was another band called MXPX that uh, was a huge influence on us. Um, so we were very much influenced. Social Distortion was one of my all time favorite bands, and so that that was very much fluent in that as well. But uh, yeah, it was definitely punk based. And so you said that you guys had some, there were some clashes within the band at times. What did you guys typically disagree on? Like what was your big disagreements? Well, if we disagreed, it was more of like, you know, the recording process can be long and tedious and you're playing the same song over and over and over again until you get, you know, until you get it right. And I remember we'd be, you know, laying down a song and we'd get right to the end and then somebody would mess, you know, mess up that, that part or something like that. And after doing that for so long, you just sort of start yelling at each other. Like, get you, just get, get it right. Just one time. Just, How hard is it? Right there. <laughs> you know, what can you do, man? You gotta, you gotta keep doing it. And at this point I've done it quite a few times now. So, you, you know, you sort of know how the process works now and you know, you're going to, you know, you have to keep going. Isn't there something that, um, people use now call like pro recorder or something well now probably not recall well, that but now most most all uh recording studios now do digital back yeah. back in those days you know not necessarily pre-internet but pre everything else that you that we know today you know uh as far as technology goes but it was all done on tape you know it's called an, you know on analog so like it was a tape so you record it and you rewind, rewind the tape back, and then you, you know you put your drums on there. Rewind it back, put the guitar on there, and you know and so so on and so forth. As a matter of fact, we attempted a third album at the studio, and when you did analog back in those days, you had to send those tapes off to get mastered and 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 done, and you know and, and finished and polished. Mm-hmm. Well, the third album, the uh, the tapes got lost in, in, in translation. So to this day, I have never heard those tracks. I have, I have no idea where that album went and, uh, it just, it disappeared. I have no idea what happened. It showed up at some kid's house in Nebraska and he's like, what the hell? Who knows, man? I have no idea, but, uh, I, it's, it's really such a shame. Cause I really don't know. I don't know what it sounded like at all. So. That's disappointing. It is. Um, you were talking about things being digital. I've listened to several interviews over the last uh, year or so with artists, and like um, it seems some of your major artists, not all of them, but they are falling back to doing the analog recording. They, really, they like the way it sounds. They like it. Like the Foo Fighters have done it. Uh, Slash really prefers it. I think uh, Steven Tyler may have done it for his country album, or or at least uh, with Aerosmith, because um, I think he was talking about that too. But somebody else I was listening to said they're – not necessarily they just like it that's their preference absolutely man old old is new again and uh as a matter of fact my band the peculiars we just recorded our album uh in orlando back in february and it was done on analog we we went back to back to that uh the same thing with the with uh people collecting vinyl now you know yeah. like you know vinyls just as you know is, is the most popular has been since that was the standard you know mm-hmm. what i mean so i mean People love vintage. People love 
people have old stuff, you know. You you think the um you think this vinyl uh, period where it's trendy, you think it's going to fade away, or do you think it might be here to stay for a little while? I, mean, I think it's a longevity. Well, I think all things fade eventually, but yeah. but they always come back around. You know, the, the vinyl thing will die down eventually. It may take a few years or so, but it'll die down, and then another fifteen years, it'll it'll come back again. You know, um, eight track has never made its way back, but. <laughs> I still have my fingers crossed, though. Still waiting for that Foghat album. <laughs> I remember uh, my mom had an 8-track. I think, it, yeah, because her old stereo had an 8-track. Um, where you could stick it in, and she had Billy Squire. I'll Man, never forget. Love it. I love it. <laughs> but, you know, vinyls, you know, vinyls worth so much money now, especially if you can find some original pressing oh, yeah. and stuff. And um, I was at the flea market, not the flea market, but the Goodwill in uh, Troutman yep. one time. And underneath, like, the women's coats, there was this box, like, sort of hidden away. And there yeah. was all these records in there. It was, like, a Black Sabbath album, Fleetwood Max Rumors, all, like, original pressings. I bought them for, like, six bucks. Like, they had no no idea what they were sitting Are you on. serious? Oh, yeah. It was great. And New Kids on the Block. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't do it without hanging out. When, when the Habitats, uh, can't blame you there. Right, see? When the Habitat store was there um, going towards Troutman on 21. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a, a vinyl, and it was Leonard Skinner's, I think, Mean Streets. Right. But it was with with the flames engulfing. You know, Pretty. it was two hundred bucks. Man, they well, right. They knew what they, they had. They knew what they had. Right. They knew I was exactly hoping that was had. a two zero, like twenty bucks. Right. I found yeah. I found a vinyl. Uh, I was in Montana, and I was at this antique store, and I found um, this Johnny Cash record. It was like from a movie he did. But it was autographed by him. I bought it for like 50 cents. They had no idea what was going on. Now, and what were you doing in Montana? Uh, uh, my best friend at the time uh, had moved there. Uh, him and his, what became his wife. and uh, So I was I was out there visiting for his wedding. I was out there for his wedding. And um, during the trip, I went I went to the store and, and found it, man. It was it was pretty crazy. What was Montana? I've never been to Montana. What was it like? Uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, not a whole lot of people, uh, but there's a lot more to do there than you would think. But if you love, like, you know, the outdoors and, um, and like, wildlife and things like that, like, there's, it's all there, man. And, like, everybody's super nice. And you, you got to get to love Huckleberry. Um, they have Huckleberry Pies Jam. Like, like, they have all these stores. Like, every, like, every few miles, there's a Huckleberry something that you have to stop at. But uh, it's a really beautiful, beautiful state. My wife and I were supposed to go to Montana for our five-year uh, anniversary, which is coming up soon. Congratulations. But, uh, thank you, man. But uh, we built the deck instead. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good with yeah, the bad right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, But we're going to New York as a um, consolation prize. Right, another great, prize. great place. city, I take it. Uh, not, not, yeah. not the upstate. No, we're not going to the upstate. I did look to see if I could sneak in a trip to Cooperstown. I get it. But dude, it's a four and a half hour train bus ride there. It, and not then, everything's close like you would no. think it is. But I'm, I was born in upstate New York. And it's, but every time I tell people I was born in New York, they all they all, they all always think the city. Right. right. You know, but no. Because there's nothing else up there. Right. right. I was born outside, just outside of Syracuse. But, uh, but yeah, like um, I love New York City as well. I would move there in a, in a minute. So you and Mandigo are close to being from the same area? Because he's from Syracuse, right? Or yeah. just outside of Syracuse? Yeah. yeah, he's from upstate for sure, yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Two guests in a row. Huh. Small world. <laughs> it is. And you both landed in Statesville. Man, we now, did, didn't we? That's like hitting the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> I was very young. I was six months old when my family moved down here. Oh, okay. Uh, and I've been here ever since, except for the times that I've moved on my own out, out away, but... Uh, yeah, man, that's where I grew up. That's what I called home. So, um, getting back to the music, who were some of the big influ- your big influences growing up? Um, in music. It's it's funny because my influences when I was very young, and my influences now are, are comp- you know completely different. But um, when I was when I was a kid, I loved like I loved like R and B music, and like Bobby Brown was like a huge huge thing for me and um and uh, then like I, I got a little bit older and I, I discovered punk like uh green day was one social distortion was another one but now it's you know i mean it's anything from howlin wolf to you know nathaniel rateliff you know um i mean it's, it's just 
endless. Johnny Cash is huge for me. Uh, I mean, it just it's endless. I try to dip my hands in as many you know musical you yeah. know, genres as I can at this point because there's there's so much great music out there that no one knows about. Right. No one knows about, and it's a shame. It really, is a shame because you hear the same ten songs on you know popular radio. You know, it's unfortunate. It's a shame too because that's. Um Unfortunately, with the popular radio, you hear it's just almost like it's on a track. You know, you can listen to oh, one station yeah. and then switch over thirty minutes later, and they're on like the same same loop. thing. You, if terrible. you notice, like all you know, all those radio stations, the, their commercials hit at the same time, and, and they're sort of just juggling the same songs and the same rotation. So, who, go ahead. Who is? I'm sorry. Who is a musician and a band out there that you're like? Why are people not hearing them? My favorite band, period, is a band called the Gaslight Anthem. Um, and they and, and while they do have a great following, you know there, there aren't enough people that know about them. Um, but I just I just love uh, the singer Brian Fallon. I just love the way he writes. I just love um, I just love the structure. I mean, they're, they're sort of an amped, a more amped up Bruce Springsteen. Okay, uh, which I love him too. But uh, yeah, they're my they're my favorite band right now of all time. And they're called the Gaslight Anthem. The Gaslight Anthem. Okay, I'm gonna have to check them out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, speaking about um, the structure of the song, when when you're creating a song, do you write the words first, or do you write the, the do you list write the music first? What take me walk me through your songwriting? I, process. I get asked this question probably more than any question. Oh as, well, good. I'm, I'm glad I'm original. <laughs> well, no, I mean it's you know you don't know if you don't ask, right? That's right. Uh, it's it's you know. It's very different. Usually I would get an idea of something that I want to write about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my songs, have, you know, come from a very personal place. Uh, I don't know if they're all meant to be taken literally word for word, you know, but um, I'll get an idea or just a line, like something like, you know, I, I have a song on my first album or what you guys know is my first album um, called Magnificent. Mm -hmm. I just had that one word. It's like I, I want to I want to put that word in a song, and I want to write a song. And so then I wrote a song about um, it's basically a song about this girl and her love for for the guy through her eyes, not not through mine. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so sometimes it's as easy as that. Uh, other times it's like, man, like this is the worst time of my life, and I'm going to write a song about it. You know what I mean? So it's just. But usually the idea comes first and music will typically come last. Yeah. Or, or this, you know, well, the, the words themselves will come last and the music sort of falls somewhere in between. I was listening to an interview with, um, one of the, uh, Oasis singer, br the well, brothers, there's Liam, Liam Gallagher and Noel Gallagher. I think it was Noel. Mm -hmm. Uh, he said that, he doesn't even write the lyrics until after, you know, they, he does the music first. And he's like, yeah, and then I just put lyrics down or whatnot because, you know, I don't really care what the lyrics have to say because <laughs> the music, I like the sound of the music. See, I'm just the opposite. Like, I, of course, I want the music to be good, but I think, you know, nobody, I mean, not a lot of people can sympathize with, with a great guitar chord. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's, it's, true. it's, you know, it's the words you remember and something that, you know, rings, you know, true, it rings to, true to you. Right? Absolutely. Something you can relate to something. And that's, that's something I've always just strived to do is just, you know, write, write songs that people can relate to. And, um, I don't know if I've succeeded in that or not, but, um, like I said, my songs come from a very personal place. And I think when people know that you're being real with them, mm -hmm. um, it'll, it'll resonate, you know, through them. So. I shouldn't say, maybe he didn't say all songs, but I, I feel like it was most of them. Yeah, that he didn't, the words were just something that he put down. There wasn't always a ton of meaning behind them. Right, right. And like, you know, songwriting can come in all different ways. And I think every musician has has written a song in different, you know, in different mm -hmm. ways. Sometimes the words come first, sometimes the music comes first, sometimes the idea, you know, it just, you just don't know. And it's just, it, and as a, as a songwriter, I think you just take it as it comes. The worst part is, I like, so, like sometimes I have dreams where I'm playing like the best song I've ever written in my life. Yeah. You know, like and you're like, and then I wake up I'm like, don't forget that, don't forget that. Right. Oh, I forgot it. You know, like it's just it's the worst. It's the worst feeling. But you know, you got to keep doing what you do. You know. 
So uh, you've graciously agreed that you would play um, a song from your uh, old album. I'm going to call it old because you have your new one coming sure. out. But one of my favorite songs from that album, and maybe you could explain that one to me, is Prize Fighter. That's, that's everybody's favorite song. Well, damn but it. I, Again, but I'm original. Much. No, uh, it's, um, you know, uh, my friend Dennis Branson told me, and, and I don't know if I agree with this or not, but uh, my friend Dennis told me, said, you, you, as far as local songwriters go, that's the best song that's been written in this town, you know. And uh, I thank you, Dennis. Uh, mine is Wide Right Turns by him, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I gotta love start that taking song. notes and all this shit. But the <laughs> Julius, con- right this down. The concept of that song came from sort of two different places. Um, I love movies about boxing, like boxers, and, and like you know, Cinderella Man was great. Yes. You know, of course, Rocky, the Rocky, right? The Rocky series was great. Creed was good. Um, I mean. And I just, I wanted to write a song about a boxer, but I didn't want it to be so much about, um, his career. I I wanted to be what, what strain that career has put on his relationship with the woman he loves the most. And, uh, she's scared. She's like, you know, he's reaching the end of his career. And one of these times you're going to go in that ring and you're going to get killed or you're going to get really hurt or something like that. You know, she's sort of scared to death. I don't, I don't want you to fight anymore. But he's like, this is this is me. This is all I've done. This is who I am. And um, so that's sort of what the, what the song is about. What a great, It's a great song. So whenever you're ready, feel free sure. to... Let me just get it up here and sort of get ready. We're good?
boy can sing. Thank you, guys. <laughs> no, that was great, man. Thank you, man. And if Appreciate you don't it. like that, you have no heart and you have no soul. <laughs> I, I can't help you. There ain't no helping you. No, that's fantastic. Thank and, you. You know, the first time I heard that was a while back, and I was listening to the album, and I was cooking for the kids, and I, you know, it was kind of I had it on shuffle, and it, I stopped. What I was doing, I just stopped. Like I was like, I, I get it. I get where that guy's coming from. I'm not a fighter by any means, but you can, you can probably. I feel like you could apply that to anything, anything Absolutely. that's hard, anything that's difficult. You're right. out on the road or whatever it is. You're grinding, sure, right, and you're out there putting yourself on the line every day. And you're leaving your family, doing whatever X is, and it's, coming it's, home. It's kind of the concept of you're out there doing whatever you can for your family, yeah. but yet your family's the one that sort of suffers because of it. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? like as far as the time, time with each other goes, and uh, that's sort of what that's all about. Oh man, that's fantastic! So I'm glad that I picked the uh, most favorite song. Um, no, that you no, play. I, that was the song I was going to play anyway. <laughs> we talked earlier, so that, that's what I was going to do. Oh, so. fantastic! Um, now you said you do. Uh, Cover songs, or y- y- when you're playing, you'll do. Yeah, I do some cover stuff. What What is one of the f- favorite cover songs that you like to cover? Um, there's a couple. Uh, I love doing, I do a version of Bob Dylan's Don't Think Twice, which I love. Um, my most requested cover song probably is Hallelujah. Uh, I do that, and I learned. I just learned a new one. I can't stop playing it because I love it. Anything new I learn, I, l- I like to wear it out. But uh, I learned a Nathaniel Rateliff song. Um, uh, I think it's still waiting, and um, uh, that I just learned. So I've been playing that a lot lately too. That's a really fun one. So. Is there a song that, if you were, to, if, when you used to take requests, or from time to time you take requests for, for covers, what is the one you're like? God, please don't ask me to play that. Well, it's it's. <laughs> It's a song that I stopped playing. I refuse. I don't. I'm not one to take requests. And anybody that's seen me play live knows this. I yeah. refuse to do it because they all, you know, it's the same cover songs that everybody else does anyway. But once upon a time, I used to play Wagon Wheel. Not anymore. I just can't do it. No. The wheel way. has broken. No. And Rodney Millsaps uh, gives me gives me crap every time that I that it, like another band plays it and like we're there in the same room and the same with Tennessee whiskey, you know, everybody plays that one now too, but um, not that they're bad songs, like they're great right. songs, but they've just been beaten up, you know, by hammered. everybody else. Uh, and Hey, if it, whoever's listening, you love those songs. Great. You like what you like. I get it. I used to love those songs too. Um, I'm not knocking you for that, but uh, I just can't do that song anymore. I just can't, can't. I, ref- I refuse to play it. There's one time this guy, was like, we play Wagon Wheel. I was like, no, not going to play Wagon Wheel. He said, I'll give you $40. Just play Wagon Wheel. I said, all right, man, I'll play it, but you got to come sing it. So so he gets up there to come to, to come play the song, and then I start playing a different song entirely. And just <laughs> oh. it but we had a good time with it. Did but, you take uh, his 40 bucks? Uh, no, I did not take his 40 bucks. As a gentleman. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not completely heartless. So now when – um. So you, you, you just finished an, a new album. Right. Okay, and it, when will that be releasing? I'm in a band called The Peculiars. Uh, I, I moved back. to st- I lived in Virginia Beach for a while, mm-hmm. and I moved back last year, June of last year, and uh, I knew I wanted to start a band. I hadn't been in a real band in a long time, and um, I recruited some guys who, who had already I'd played with in the past and that I knew there were seasoned musicians, and I knew there would be a lot. There would be very little dr- drama, you know, there, and... Um, and so I formed this band called The Peculiars, and uh, we went and recorded our album in Orlando in February, like I said. Um, it's very rock and roll, very, you know, I would say catchy rock and roll. We listen to a lot of Rolling Stones. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying it sounds anything like that, but, um, but uh, yeah, it, so hopefully it comes out sometime next month, um, October at the very latest, uh, but we're super excited about it. Um, and the songs on here are just, you know, I, I love these songs so much. I, I, I support them completely, and the band is behind them 100%. So I'm really excited to get this out there and for people to hear. Now, do you guys have a, a tour or anything like that, a circuit set up that you're going to go on? We certainly to have promote? that We certainly have that in mind, uh, something we want to do. It probably, if we do that, it probably won't be until next year, and okay. it'll probably be an East Coast. We'll, we'll at least start East Coast tour, probably 10, 12 dates, you know, up the East Coast. Uh, but for now, it's just a matter of getting the album out and trying to and trying to stay regional. Um, try to get you know here, obviously, but Charlotte, you know, Asheville, you know, Greensboro, things like that. 
uh, in the surrounding cities, you know, start start there and sort of branch out. So for like a smaller band, or I'll just call it a local band, mm-hmm. you know, how do do you guys have a manager, or, or do, does one of you take on that managerial role for like booking and that yeah, sort of I mean, stuff? Uh, depending on how far this goes, a manager might be something in our future. But as for now, like we do all the booking. I've, I've I think I've gotten us most of the shows that we've done. Um, but you know, being in this business a long time, you know, being a musician for as long as we've been and, uh, you know, all the other guys in the band have been musicians for a long time. We always know some, there's always somebody, you know, especially mm-hmm. in North Carolina, there's always somebody, you know, um, so we have, you know, connections in places. So that's, that's been very, um, useful for us. And we're very grateful for that because, uh, getting shows shouldn't be too much of a problem, at least in the immediate future. So it's good that you guys at least have the flexibility with job because everyone has to work, right? Right. Uh, the flexibility part, that's the problem. You know, we all work different schedules. You know, I'm a bartender, so my, my schedule's all over the place, but I do have some flexibility there. Some of these guys work strict nine to five, Monday through Friday jobs. You know, so we've had to, you know, we've missed out on a couple of shows because of that. Yeah. Uh, we, were, we were slated to play Norfolk, uh, Virginia back in March, and we had to give up the show just because of the work you know, scheduling conflict. You know, so that's been the tough part. But I think, the, you know, the older you get, as a musician, um, the more you, you know, sort of run into those sort of problems. But you just work through it, and you know things work out. They always do. Now, do you write most? Of, have you written? Do you I've, write most of the songs for this album? Songs for the okay. album. Yeah. Um, now, not to discredit the band, because I will come in with a song that I've written, and they, you know, the way it gets structured, you know, is all collective. You know, mm-hmm. we all. I mean, everybody has ideas and things that I would have never thought of. Um, and that's sort of what has made the songs what they are. I mean, you, for those who have heard my last album and to what this is, you're going to see it's completely, completely different. Um, so I'm re- which is what I'm really excited about. There's a song on my first album called just fiction. Um, that song is also on this new album, okay. but, uh, it's completely different than it was the first time. So it's, it, it's always just fascinated me putting a song together. Cause you have your lyrics and then like, do you, do you sit in a room and you get, you know, you, you sing the song to them maybe. And then someone just starts beating on the drum or starts ticking a little tune on the guitar. And like, it all just kind of magically falls together. It's sort of like that. Sometimes it doesn't fall together at all and you sort of trash it. But, um, it's like you ever you ever go into a bar and play like photo hunt on, on those? <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? And like you're right. you're stuck there, like you're you're trying to find that last piece, and you're like, I can't find it, and somebody just walks straight up and it's like, there it is. It's it's a lot like that. You know what I mean? Like sometimes there's just it just takes another ear, just like to like this is what it's missing, and this is what you know should be there. Um, so when you find some people that you work well with, which I do, I work well with all these guys. Yeah. Um, I should probably say their names at some point, but. Um, when you work with guys like that, it's just it's just a lot of fun. It's been all fun. There's been no no fighting. There's been no drama. It's been it's just been all you know fun and and support. We all support each other very much. That's cool. And then you also play on the side too with another local band, right? The yeah, Horsemen. Yeah, I'm a part of a faction called the Horsemen, which was a complete accident, by the way. We are not a band by any means. We are. We all met at an open mic. Basically, I was already friends with Bryce. Bryce and I already knew each other, but. Um, Rodney Millsaps and Dennis Brinson were, would come to these open mics. Uh, I think Rodney hosted with, with Bryce and, um, we sort of got introduced musically Mm -hmm. to each other by this. We all dug each other's style and eventually somebody gave us the name, the four horsemen, because we were always hanging out together and things like that. Uh, And then eventually people started wanting, you know, wanted to book us as the four horsemen. We're like, I remember at the first one, we're like, we're not, you know, how do we do this? So, like, the structure of it at first was just, you know, we each play four individual sets. I would go up and play a set, then Bryce would go play his set. And then, you know, so now we sort of worked it into an act where we sort of all, we're all on stage together and, and we take turns. Like, I'll play one of my songs and then they sort of back me up. And then Ronnie will play one of his songs and we'll back him up. You know, it's kind of like that. And we try to make, you know, make more of a show out of it. Yeah. But it's been a complete accident. I mean, it's just it's just four guys who who love each other and their friends just kind of getting up and, and playing music together. Um, which, by the way, uh, we are playing this Friday at Delaney's uh, on the 24th. So if uh, you're available, come out and check it out. Sweet. So it's really a fun project, right? There's no Absolutely. stress involved. There's no practice involved. Yeah. It's just like we don't we don't get together and, and, and you know, come up with ideas. It's just, you know, uh, 
uh, we just get together and play. Uh, Roddy and I did write a song together uh, when I lived in Virginia. He came up to visit to do some shows up there. But uh, it's just we're all sort of, you know, we're very in tune with each other. We know each other's songs so well at this point. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy to, you know, to follow each other and back each other up. So do you guys, but you basically just played local, local stuff here yeah, in downtown. Yeah, yeah. So you... we did. I mean, the, the biggest thing we've done, we did the Hobson Harmony Festival last year. Uh, it was us and Matt Walsh, which who was amazing. Um, but uh, it's just a good time. It's just a lot of fun. We just get up and play, have a few drinks. and, and Every it. time Matt's in town, I'm always out of town. Because I remember he was a senior when I was a freshman. Yeah. And so I would finish gym class. And when um, I wasn't ha- getting beat up by Dunham out there in the circle, because I was a wrestler and he was a senior. Right. So, and I weighed, you know, 98 pounds soaking wet. And he, we'd have to go out there, and I'd have to take my ass whooping every day. And in between classes, you know, Matt would be sitting over just hanging out and um, watching me get my ass whipped by Dunham. But right, uh, I this internet radio, you can say that ass, <laughs> ass. It it feels good, like oh, you can man. just how liberating, it. right? I, right. I just yes, <laughs> that's right. We're not interrupted by a commercial. Oh man, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. But yeah, Matt's such a great musician, man. Like he is, I and mean, he still comes back and right. plays in states, which is great. Right, and there are a lot of great musicians in this town, and I, th- I think I think as a whole, people are starting to notice that. I mean the. the the music scene here now was is, you know, three years ago it, it was almost non-existent. Right. You know? So to see what, how far how much it's grown and, and how far it's come like is amazing. I was thinking, you know, this morning or this afternoon, um, I think it'd be great. And maybe it's happened, and I just was asleep and missed it. You know, I had twins. They'll they'll be two years old on Thursday. Happy birthday, Happy Demp birthday. And Um So I kind of been in a fog, but I think it would be fun to have either like a battle of the bands. Um, in downtown Statesville, or if there was, um, like, do you remember the old weekend in the village? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So that was a lot of fun. That's sort uh, of what Pumpkin Fest is now. Kind of. Kind of. Right. right. But if there was just, I don't know, if there was just more musical things outside that got people together, one of the things I've always thought would be awesome is if there was a huge concert festival at Statesville High. It's a large, plenty of parking. You're in downtown. It's a football stadium. You can pack 6,000 people in there. Good. How do we make that happen? <laughs> I thought I would love to see more of a downtown thing, like where there's music everywhere, even on the streets. Yeah. Um, and do kind of like, a, like, you know, South by Southwest in Austin. They do like, it's a, you know, the streets are just all music. Every bar, every restaurant's all music. Like, um, and you sort of make a whole like weekend out of it, like big party. That's a good idea. Yeah. It's not about it, you know. Even on uh, Broadway in uh, in Nashville, right? Absolutely. You know, I used, yeah, I used to live there, so yeah, absolutely. Like musicians everywhere, uh, and I think that's what it's about. I mean, if you know, certainly at this point, you know, there's a lot of us who do the same shit. You know, we're always playing all over town. Yeah, people act me, and you know, it's, it's only natural that people want something new. Sure. Uh, and eventually, you know, things get old, and so you got to find a way to keep things fresh and keep things new. And, and also bring some new stuff in as well. It'd be cool if Statesville was a destination for new artists, young artists, or see people to travel and come to the, I don't want to say the Statesville circuit, but if it I was... I think a, it could get that way. I mean, you know, I think it's, you know, a few years out, but I, I don't think that's out of the question. Like I said, I mean, to see the evolution of where uh, local music has come just in the last few years, yeah. um, I, I'm excited to see where it's going to be in the next few years, you know. You know, plus there's breweries opening up downtown. There's right, a cigar exactly. shop. There's nice restaurants to go to. So it's... More opportunity, for it's sure. It's not out of the realm of possibility. It is not. I agree. Maybe the peop- the powers that be in Statesville are listening I to the show. So. I hope so. We hope so. Um, so when you are not performing music, what, what are you into? Like, what else is fun? Like, if you're going to go have a good time, you're going to watch something, like, what do you get into other than um, music? I... Let's see. If I'm not working... I'm not playing music. Um, I spend a lot of time with my girlfriend, but I'm a big. I'm a. I've always been a huge wrestling fan. Um, I, I I watch it. I'm I not just watch it, but I'm sort of. I feel like I'm sort of a historian. I love the history of it. Yeah. Um. So I will I will watch or listen to documentaries about the way it was back in you know back in the 30s and 40s and all the way up to now and the way it's evolved. So I, I, I do a lot of that. And, it, you know, I, I've watched wrestling ever since I was a little kid. And this is something that's always sort of stuck with me. 
And now my son, like he's a huge wrestling fan too. So it gives us something, you know, to, to talk about and to relate to with each other. Um, uh, also, I'm, I'm a huge, like I'm a, I'm a comic book guy. I know Julius is a, is a Marvel guy, but I'm a, I'm definitely a DC guy. Um, <laughs> Batman, <laughs> yeah, get out, get out, <laughs> out of here. But I'm a bat, well, I'm, I'm a Batman guy and all things related to that, you know, to Gotham City and stuff like that. So um, I think everybody has a little nerd in them. You know what I mean? So, um, and so but, with the wrestling thing, like I was a huge wrestling fan growing up too. I think it would be hard, especially here with the roots of wrestling in North Carolina. Sure. Growing up as a kid, it would be you know hard not to be in a way. Right. I agree. But man, I could That's remember on Saturday mornings, AWA would man. be coming on at like nine or ten o'clock. That's right, man. And uh, I would be sitting there with my buddy doll, jumping off the top rope, which was the couch, pile driving, and way back when in the early eighties. Uh, my favorite wrestler was uh, Magnum. Magnum TA. Magnum TA. Right. The ability to back suplex was his Man. signature move. What a guy. What a guy. Him and, uh, remember Tully Blanchard? And- Tully Blanchard, right. I met Magnum TA. Um, did you really? Yeah. It was, they did a, a, a wrestling thing at the Hickory Crawdad Stadium. Yeah. You know, it was, he was there. The Rock and Roll Express were there. Jake the Snake Roberts, Greg the Hammer Valentine. I mean, these guys are Kamala. Um, so I met him. He was he was a really nice guy. Some of those guys were not so nice. Really, but I will say, but the but Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express they were super nice. Um, so it's always great when you can meet people that you've always looked up to, and uh, and uh, they're they're cool. You know, it's right. they say don't meet your heroes and stuff. And um, in music, I've definitely met some some real assholes. But um, but you know, I guess that's. The chance you take. I remember one time they did a thing at the Armory here yeah. in town. I saw the Rock and Roll Express at the Armory. Yeah, I was there at that. Jimmy yeah. Garvin was there, and like it was, it was a really cool event, especially as a kid. You know, to see, you know, this first time I'd ever seen anything like that live. Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, um, last week uh, my girlfriend Brittany and I were on a, about to board a plane to L.A. and uh, WWE superstars now, Becky Lynch and Brian Kendrick were on my flight and I talked to them and they were great. They were cool. We took pictures together. And so it's just, you know, I, I was completely fanned out. Um, <laughs> Did anyone else recognize them or not? That, you... Not that I saw. Okay. But, um, I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying that they weren't recognized, yeah. but uh, not that I saw, but they were gracious. They, they you know, they, they talked, you know, they talked to me for a while and we took pictures together and uh, talked wrestling for a little bit. So, um, it was great, man. Now, when you were growing up as a kid, who was your favorite wrestler? That's a tough one. It is tough. Because um, I mean, if you're anything like me, I switched. I, I mean, did too. But, but they were still like my top five or like, you know, he's my favorite this week, but I still love, you know, Sting. It was Ultimate right. Warrior. Right. You know, and all that kind I of stuff. I was a kid, I'll, I'll go through like my top five or something like that. All right. That's it. Dusty Rhodes was, was up there. Let me tell you something, Tony. That's right, man. He was good. <laughs> That's right, baby. Uh, <laughs> the American Dream. Uh, oh, I love it. But uh, the Road Warriors were another one. Absolutely. Uh, Randy Savage was was another one. Um, the Rock and Roll Express as a kid, I was super big on. I never liked Hulk. Hogan. I was never a big fan of Hulk Hogan, man. Really? Like, um, and I would uh, probably Jake the Snake was another one I was a big fan of as a, as a little kid. But uh, Hulk Hogan, I just never, I never got it. You know, so anytime like like I remember he fought the Ultimate Warrior, mm-hmm. and I was like, all right, Warrior. Just I hope you win, man. And he did. Uh, but uh, it wasn't until Hogan went heel, turned turned to a bad guy with the NWO and stuff. Yeah. Was, all right. All right. I, I'm entertained. I can get down with yeah. that now. Right. Because he's always the good guy. He was. Right? always the good guy. He was always the, the carbon copy cookie cutter cutout. Of Take that. your vitamins. I didn't know what a vitamin was as a kid. <laughs> So I was like, where do I get these? Where do, where do I get these Mom, I mythical buy things? buy me a vitamin, whatever that is. <laughs> Can I get one of those? <laughs> um, the cameraman said, we need to, you oh, to turn need to, this oh, way. Oh, my bad. Yeah. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting we're, that word. We're getting a live text that the ladies want to see you. Oh, right. That's right. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> so now, but now as you've grown up as as an adult, who who do you like to watch wrestle now? Well, I just, you know, there's... So many, there's so many wrestling factions out there now. It's not just WWE anymore. You have All Japan and uh, Ring of Honor and things that are really starting to take notice. But uh, I, I would think my modern day favorite wrestler, favorite wrestler who's not really doing it at the moment is CM Punk. Um, he was he was my favorite I think of all time. 
but there's some great ones out now. I mean, um, uh, on NXT, there's there's a wrestler called Alistair Black, who I'm a big fan of, um, Tommaso Ciampa, and I love I do love what they're doing with women now in wrestling. They're not yeah. they're not a novelty act anymore. Um, they're really you know stealing the show now, which is which is really awesome. But it's just you know it's just like anything else. I just want to be entertained, and I've, right. I've just always been entertained by it. You know, I think it's a real art form. A lot of people look at it as a joke. You know, they, all, it, they every time you tell somebody you're wrestling, they're like you know it's fake, right? You know, it's fake. yeah, yeah, I get it. So is everything else you watch exactly so, <laughs> right? The Kardashians that's that's staged, right? Okay? Absolutely. But you know the thing about wrestling is okay, yeah, okay. Here's what's here's what's predetermined the winner. Okay, but those guys got to train. They got to get in there. They got to pull off their art because it is an art form. The injuries, you know, what we don't know behind the scenes. I mean, look at Paige. You know, she what broke her neck back. Broke neck. She'll never wrestle again. No, no. Now she's the GM of uh, SmackDown. SmackDown, right? You know, and whatever happened to uh, Brian. Daniel, Daniel Bryan. Bryan. Yeah, he he's, is. He's wrestling again. He is. He did. He was cleared oh, earlier this year, move. and now he's doing it again. Well, he's well, he's sort of been cleared for a while, but <sighs> WWE has been very hesitant to, to Yeah, the neck back. is nothing to mess with. But I watched you – know, SummerSlam was last night, and I got Brittany to watch it with me. She's never watched wrestling. <laughs> so I, I kind of had Brittany. the same conversation with her last night. Like, yeah, I get it. I get it's all – like, the winner is predetermined. But, right. you know, what you have to do to get there and and – and everything else that goes along with it. And, and then when you see something happen that wasn't supposed to happen, you know, just sort of like watching, you know, NASCAR or whatever. When yeah. you see a wreck or something like, you're like, oh, that's, you know, like, you know, it's kind of like that. But it's everything's fake. It's you entertainment. Know? It's, right. So. And, they're, and it's good that they've actually, I think, opened up about it. Everybody knows about it now. But yeah, there's no but, secret anymore. But, but I don't think it's hurt their viewership. No, it has. I mean, it's it's. Just as popular now as it's ever been. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a multi. I mean, it's a billion dollar company. WWE is anyway, and then some of these independent companies now they're selling out uh, like Madison Square Garden now. So I mean, it's there's a huge audience for it. You know what's weird though is millions and millions of people watch it, but I can't find anybody in like, like in right. town that watches it. Well, do they? Do they just you know don't tell? It's like a know. guilty pleasure. It's like. It's like a, it's it's like uh, I'm I'm a secret I'm not a secret fan but I I am a Lady Gaga is a very big guilty pleasure of mine. Okay. So when you find somebody else that likes her, like a guy that likes her, it's like right. it's like we're in the same club. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's kind of like that. So like when you when you find people that like wrestling too, it's like oh we're in the same club. Finally, somebody I can talk to this about because you don't get a lot of people you can talk to. That so there's a, a buddy of mine. He's a friend of my brother's brother in law's name Chris. He's agreed to come on the show at some point later. But he like you is a huge wrestling fan from like when he was already. a kid up until now. So I think what I might try to do is to do like a double show or just a show with you two and myself here and we'll just kick an old school wrestling show man i'm i'm in <laughs> sign me up let's do it um but but again you know these wrestlers are athletic you got a six nine guy you know 350 80 pounds jumping off the top rope and doing stuff that most people can't do well not just that but you know they're doing five to six shows a week sometimes and there's no off season like these mm. guys are doing it every single week uh and that's i I, to me, that's amazing. If I if I'd have known as a like a kid, like yeah. this was a reality. Like you could actually do that. That's right. That's where I'd be right now, or at least I would have given it a shot. You know, but it always seemed like one of those things that are just so foreign to me. Music didn't for some reason, but right. but wrestling just seemed like so foreign. Like I could never do that. You know, but if only if only I could go back, I would do it. Again. I would. That's what I would be doing. But those guys, I man, they take a beating. You know, they get beat oh, up, and the injuries are severe. You. Um, you know, like those schools that they that they go to, like to train. You know, ninety percent of those guys don't make it. Like they quit. Um, I had a friend that that uh, went into wrestling school and he didn't make it. He got hurt. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it's it's hard to come out. I mean, so the, there's only a very small percentage that actually come out of those schools and actually get to make a career out of it. It's pretty amazing. It, it it is, and I hope it continues. And more people, if you're a wrestling fan, don't be scared of it. Don't That's be right. scared. Come out. There's someone at the bar who Preach wants it. to talk to you about. We'll talk it. to you about it, man. <laughs> so, um, back to the music for a second, sure. because uh, you also agreed um, to play a sample or maybe a song from your new album. Yeah, I'll play a song from the new maybe album. Maybe sure. anyone you want, because we don't know what they are. Yeah, I will. Um, 
First, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the rest of my bandmates. Uh, there's Rob McCrady, who plays the bass guitar, who's also a local musician. Um, Ross Josie on drums. A lot of people know Ross. Uh, he's also another guy that's been playing music for 20 plus years and still actively doing it today. Um, and then my good friend Matt Mode, who plays lead guitar, he's based out of Hickory. Uh, but uh, I got to give a shout out to those guys because uh, with, without them, there would be no peculiar. So, but I will do a song from the upcoming album. Uh, let me just take these headphones off and real quick figure out what song I'm going to play. Sure thing. And while we're waiting on that, just remember if you can name tonight's uh, intro. Uh, song title and the artist free twenty five dollar uh, gift certificate to Delaney's. Correct. Not twenty five of them. Not twenty five of them. No. <laughs> um. So I'll plug the album a little bit here before I, before I get into this. You know, this album sort of accidentally became a concept album. There's a couple songs on it that don't have anything to do with each other, but for the most part, this this album tells a real story. Um. And it basically, it's, it's basically a story about me adjusting to being back home and, you know, start sort of starting a new life and, and um, everything kind of being foreign. And, and you know, I, I had a relationship that ended, you know, in Virginia. And, um, you know, so anyone that knows what it's like to, to go through a breakup and, and, and what all that entails is a thing. But I, I need to make it very clear that I'm, this is the happiest I've ever been in my life. And I mean, I absolutely mean that. Um, and if it wasn't for Brittany, I wouldn't be where I am. So I need to make that very clear. But this is the place I was at at the time. So this is what came out. And uh, so this is a song uh, from the album uh, called Leaving.
that was good. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you so much for, for playing that. So uh, are we the first ones to hear that? Uh, I play that. We play that song out a lot. I mean, the Peculiars does it. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, people have sort of started getting familiar with it at this point. And uh, it's cool because now people are singing along to it and things like that. I've, I made it a point to, once I knew that the album was going to come yeah. out, I picked a select, even when I was doing acoustic shows without the band, I made sure to play a, a few of those songs constantly because I just wanted it to get stuck in people's heads. Well, that, that one is stuck. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm leaving here tonight. Mission accomplished. You know, it, it's, it, it's catchy. It's got a good hook. It's got a great Thank rhythm. Thank no, job well done. Thank you. Maybe second best song written here in Statesville. <laughs> Thank you very right. much. I no, I mean, it, you know, I think um, people don't understand what a great songwriter you are. Wow, and, and the fact you. that, uh, you know, now that people are listening and learning, oh, okay, this guy's writing his own stuff, you know, hopefully they'll listen to it, go back and re-listen, and then when the new album comes out, they'll appreciate uh, the art that it really is. I hope so. Um, and when the album does come out, uh, whenever that is, hopefully next month, but uh, it'll be available on all internet platforms, iTunes, Google, Amazon, um, uh, YouTube, wherever you can buy internet music, you know, download it. It'll be on there, so. Well, that's so. Let me ask you this: So, in this new world of, of you know, you're putting your album out there on all these digital platforms. Is right. that right? Sure. So, how how do you you make money off of that? Uh, so, the way my last album worked was basically, um, iTunes sold my album for nine ninety nine. Well, still is nine ninety nine, and each song is like ninety nine cents or something like that. Yeah. So let's say for every album I sell at nine ninety nine, I get six ninety nine of that. And then the company I went through uh, to distribute the album, they get they get the rest. Okay. And then after after I accumulate so much money, then they write me a check. I remember I got my first royalty check ever last. It was last year, or the year before. I can't remember. It was shortly after the album came out, and uh, I remember I got it. I didn't even cash it. I just I just like framed it. Like I just wanted to like. It's my first royalty check as a musician, so it was pretty cool, like thirty six bucks or something. Like that. <laughs> but uh, still, I've gotten cool. a few since, you know. I mean, so that's that's cool, man. Like I, I know I've been streamed on Spotify like over a thousand times, and really, um, so it's really cool. Like it's been really cool. So I've I've had a lot of support, you know, with it, and um, um, I'm re- I'm just so stoked for people to hear the new the new album. So. And did you tell me, uh, we were at a wedding together uh, we were. back in May. Did you tell me that you had heard or someone had heard you on like iHeartRadio maybe or something, a song of yours? Or? Uh, I don't I don't, not, I don't know if it was iHeartRadio. I'd had a few cocktails, so I, I, know I may we have were, totally made that up. I get it. Uh, but, I, but somebody played me or played uh, the Peculiars in Las Vegas on a Las Vegas radio thing. Um, so that, that was really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've been on the radio quite a few times, not just local radio, but um, I know like uh, Charlotte radio stations have played me. And um, so I don't know, man, we're just excited to get it out there, you know, just to put some new stuff out there. And, and uh, I, th- I think we put on a great show. I think we're like, I think our live show is something uh, to come out and see. Um, so um, speaking of which, we do have some shows uh I like to plug if I can. Absolutely. Sure. Um, we are. We September eighth is going to be uh, the fifteen year anniversary party of Delaney's. Uh, they've been in business for fifteen years, or we've been in business for fifteen years. Um, so I'm excited to be a part of that. Peculiar is going to be a part of that, along with like, the broad pickups and Holt up and and uh, Dennis Brinson and some other acts to be announced. Uh, so we're going to be there for that. Uh, the Peculiars were also playing the Balloon Festival this year uh, on October 20th. Will be our time, I think, at five o'clock. Uh, five o'clock that Saturday. And my other faction, the Horsemen, were playing uh, this Friday at Delaney's. So, uh, so come out and support, man. Support local music. Absolutely. Um, two random questions yes. before we wrap this bad boy it. up. Love it. Okay. What is your number one that nobody would know about? Okay. But what's your one guilty pleasure? Oh man, I have more than one. <laughs> no, all right. Uh, what's your favorite guilty pleasure? How about that? Um, man, all right. We talked about wrestling. I mentioned if, I'm a Lady Gaga fan. If you say chewing your own toenails, oh god, no. Uh, god, I know a guy who does that. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you who it is because you know him too. <laughs> 
I'll ask you about that after, after the show. Oh, man. It, it, oh, I don't want to say it on the air. I think I know who it is. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have a lot. I mean, um, musically, like I said, Lady Gaga is one. Um, I want... I, I tell you, it's, it's something I watch on TV. Yeah, I'm fascinated with like murder shows, like in like uh, like like making a murder and like yeah. lock up like prison shows and stuff like that. Like anything, anything that I I'm fascinated by things I I I'm either afraid of or I, I will never be right. Um, like shows about snakes, I don't like snakes at all, but I'll watch I'll watch stuff about them on TV all all day long. And stuff with like murders and like you know like crimes and stuff like that. I'll never do these things, right? But I'm just completely like sucked in. Like I I want to know like how do, how do you how do you operate? Like what you know what I mean? Absolutely. I get my wife and I. We're sick and twisted. Like we fall asleep every night to the ID channel. I get it. You're right. Love why, it. Why, why why fall asleep to that? Love it. You know, your Love kids it. murdered their parents. <laughs> you know. Did do did, did you see the South Park episode where like they're all fast they're all fascinated with these like these same type of shows like these like id shows and stuff but they do it so they can like because it gets them in the mood and, like so they have sex like great sex with each other uh <laughs> it's, it's not working that's not that why way i do it but it's called the... yeah but uh i thought that was pretty funny <laughs> okay and um if you were you could go back in time and you could have your career as a wrestler what would your wrestling name be oh man uh my nickname Anybody that knows me well knows that my nickname is the Polecat. Like my close friends call me that, um, so that's probably what it would be: Polecat Perry or something. Polecat like Perry. Yeah. God, now I'm gonna have to go with the I third question. I pictured it a million times. Man, go ahead. What? All right, I'm making it for. What would be your intro song, and what would be your signature, your your signature move, Polecat Perry? Oh, man, um, the signature song. That's a good one. I'd like to think it'd be something I wrote. Um, but um, I don't know. It, it, I always pitch. There's there's a song that Dropkick Murphys do hmm. called "The Boys Are Back." Um, every time I hear that song, I always picture myself coming out like, to, yep. to, like as a wrestler. I get so, it. So that's that's probably it. My mind that I always when I hear it, I'm always I picture myself running is a uh, "Knock 'Em Dead," "Knock 'Em Dead Kid" by oh, Motley Crue. Right. Yep. Love it, man. As soon as I hear that, I'm where I just want to run into <laughs> something. <laughs> I love it, but my finisher. I've already, I already known that for years. It's a, it's, a, it's a move I call the cat's cradle, and uh, it kind of goes along with the pole cat, but uh, sort of like a DDT move. Um, but uh, I've, I've known about that for years. Like I would put everybody, put everybody to waste with that thing. Pole cat Perry. That's right, man. Putting them out. Thanks for coming on the show, buddy. Hey guys, thanks for having me. I appreciate, I appreciate it. It's been a lot it. of fun. A lot of fun. You guys check out Adam Perry and the Peculiars. New Please. album is coming out soon, and when it does, we'll we'll promote the absolutely. We'll send we'll you some tracks and, yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Sure. All right, guys, thanks. Appreciate it.